It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. President Trump says he will declare a national emergency over the opioid epidemic. We're going to draw it up and we're going to make it a national emergency. Uh, it is a serious problem, the likes of which we have never had. You know, when I was growing up, they had the LSD and they had certain generations of drugs. There's never been anything like what's happened to this country over the last four or five years. Drug overdoses are the leading killer of Americans under 50, about two-thirds of them from opioids. A national emergency declaration would marshal federal resources to address it. But this comes amid news. Some are taking bold action on their own. According to the American Journal of Preventive Medicine, a U.S. social services agency is secretly running a supervised injection site at an undisclosed location. The underground facility has overseen more than 2,500 injections by around 100 people. Joining me is Maya Salovitz, author of Unbroken Brain, A Revolutionary New Way of Understanding Addiction. Her new piece for Vice is called There's Been a Secret Safe Injection Site in the U.S. for Three Years. Maya, welcome. Ah, thank you so much for having me. Let's talk first about uh, this site that you've written about. Uh, shocking news that somebody here in the U.S., we don't know where, has been running a safe injection site on their own. Yeah, I mean, I think there's probably more than one. Um, there certainly was a bathroom in the Bronx that was sort of unofficially serving as um, uh, such a place. And, you know, when people see people at risk, they have to, you know, people feel moved to do something to help. And so what is going on at this facility? So basically what happens is people who um, inject drugs um, can go there. They have um, clean equipment, a nice mellow place to just do their thing. They don't have to rush. They can properly find a vein and not just, you know, sort of stab at themselves. And that allows people to practice safe injection technique and be safer about what they do. This is a practice that is uh, legal in many other countries. Can you talk a bit about uh, what happens there and what the uh, research has shown about its efficacy? Sure. So there are about 66 such facilities in at least nine countries. And the most important statistic is that there has never been an overdose death, even though they have had thousands of injections and at least hundreds, perhaps thousands of people um, through these places. So looking at this news now of this uh, secret site in the context of Trump appearing to uh, be poised to declare this, uh, the, the opioid crisis, a national emergency, uh, your thoughts on the conversation around addiction right now and this potential federal response to it? Well, there's a good thing that could happen from declaring an emergency, and there's bad things that could happen. Um, the good thing would be that when you have a state of emergency for health, you can cut through a lot of red tape. And one of the things that has really been hampering the response to this epidemic is we have two treatments that we know of that cut the death rate 50% or more. And we are not get only about 10% of treatment programs offer these treatments. And we create all these barriers because um, we have just too much regulation on this. So ironically, you know, the sort of Republican, let's cut red tape and let's get rid of bureaucracy and let's stop overregulation. That is a really important aspect of this because basically uh, methadone and buprenorphine, we know that if you use them long term, they cut the death rate 50% or more. And yet we have limited access to those substances only to people who are willing to show up at a certain time and, and go through counseling and get urine tested and, and all of these kinds of things when really we should be giving those substances to anybody who wants a dose as long as we know that they haven't gotten another dose from another site the same day. Because even if they're going to use illegal drugs on top, if they maintain their tolerance and at least have some access to something of known dose and purity, 
um, they will be at far less risk of dying. And the research shows that if you, um, regardless of whether you provide counseling or other things, these medications save lives. I'm sure you've gotten this uh, question though before. I mean, how can you give people a dose of something that uh, is bad for their health? Well, it's not necessarily bad for their health. And if the alternative is taking poison, um, it certainly um, is appropriate to do. Um, I think what we have to do is we have to think about drug-related harm, not about is somebody taking a substance I believe to be immoral or the law has decided is immoral. We have laws that were made because of racism. Our drug laws, nobody sat down and said, yeah, tobacco and, and alcohol should be legal and marijuana and all these other substances shouldn't be legal based on clear science. You know, the way we got our drug laws was a series of racist panics. And so if we're going to be rational about substance use, what we need to realize particularly about opioids is that most of the danger associated with them is associated with illicit use. And this is not to say that you can't overdose on pain pills. It's just more to say that if you want to avoid overdose and you know the dose and purity of something, you are much more likely to be able to do so than if you are taking something that you have no idea what it is. And what do you make right now of the efforts to hold uh, big pharmaceutical companies accountable? There have been lawsuits against I some- I think that actually, I mean, the drug companies did serious wrong here. They should be fined. They did terrible marketing things. But the crime here is what's legal for them to do. It's not that, um, I mean, they sort of, like, like I said, I'm not justifying anything they did. But one cannot become a person with addiction without taking drugs not as prescribed. You have to repeatedly use drugs despite negative consequences in order to meet criteria for addiction. And you can become physically dependent on a substance if you just take it every day, but that's not addiction. Addiction is compulsive behavior despite negative consequences. And if the consequences of taking a substance every day are I get out of bed and function really well, I'm not addicted to that substance. So with opioids, what we have done is basically chased people from having a supply that uh, you know that they know the dose of and they know the purity of to fentanyl, which is thousands of times stronger often, depending on the variant. And you know, it, it's what we have done is simply increased harm. Hmm. So finally, Maya, if you were on the president's commission, uh, what would have been your top recommendations for how we should address the epidemic on a federal level? Sure. So, I mean, immediately lift all the regulations that prevent prescribing of buprenorphine and methadone to whoever wants it in a controlled fashion. Um, do not say that you may only get methadone for addiction in X clinic. Allow all doctors who want to prescribe to prescribe. And the only requirement for participation in maintenance programs should simply be, we know your name. And we, you show up, you get your dose, you can do your thing. Now, there are certainly people who want to stabilize their lives and want to move on um, and who could benefit from counseling and psychiatric care and all kinds of other good services that we can give them. So we should triage those services to people who actually want them rather than forcing people into them who don't want them. If we do this, we will get access to a far greater number of people. And we know that if people have access to these drugs, people who stay on them have a 50% uh, less risk of dying uh, from overdose. So, you know, if we get this to as many people as possible, we can cut this thing in half. Maya Zalovitz, author of Unbroken Brain, A Revolutionary New Way of Understanding Addiction. Her new piece for Vice is called There's Been a Secret Safe Injection Site in the U.S. for Three Years. Maya, thank you. Ah, thanks so much for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.